welcome to my channel. I'm Stasia and I recently lost almost 60 pounds following a whole food plant-based diet. So today's video, I am going to be sharing five different cooking hacks that I find have really helped me to lose this weight. It's always going to be about trying to make things as easy as you can so that you can be as consistent as you can. And then kind of once you get it down pat, then you're just, you know, smooth sailing from there. Losing weight has not always been easy for me, and trust me when I tell you that I have tried a gazillion different ways to try to make it happen. But finally, I'm happy to say that I've narrowed it down to, you know, just a handful of things that I'm able to do that make my life so much easier, and that I just do these things on repeat. And finally, I've been able to kind of put together a little system that works really well for me and has really helped me to lose 57 pounds. Okay, but before we jump into the video, in case you didn't see my most recent video I just put out a few days ago, I just released my brand new ebook called Shake Off the Weight for my most popular fiber protein shakes that if you've been following me for a while, then you know exactly what those are. And in case you haven't, my fiber protein shakes are these shakes that really helped me lose a lot of this weight. So actually I drank them almost every day to lose the first 30 pounds and I've still drank them consistently throughout my weight loss journey. And then more recently, I was trying to get out of a plateau that I found myself in around the 50 pound mark. So I kind of got serious with drinking them every single day again. And now I've lost another seven pounds since. So they've also helped bring me out of a plateau. I love these shakes so much and I've talked about them tremendously on my channel. So I'm not going to get into too much here. If you're interested in knowing more about the shakes, then I will post this video in my description box below. I really took the time to explain how they work, why they worked for me, kind of what's the magic behind them when it comes to weight loss. And so yeah, just get into all the details in that video. So if you want to know more specific about these fiber protein shakes, then check this video out. Like I said, I'll have that linked in my description box below. But in a nutshell, these shakes have been an incredible part of my weight loss journey. They taste amazing. I have awesome flavors like birthday cake, chocolate brownie, Snickers chocolate bar, peanut butter cup, coffee crisp, like some really, really delicious type of dessert like shakes. And I've had so much positive feedback from all of you guys who put your trust in me to just give these shakes a try, despite, you know, beans being one of the magic ingredients in them. You trusted me and I just love hearing the wonderful feedback of how much you've enjoyed my flavors and how they've worked for you. I honestly actually haven't heard anything negative about these shakes to date. So that makes me really, really happy. And I strongly believe in them because they have worked really well for me. So I'm pretty confident that they will work for you guys as well. Okay, but with all that being said, because it's my launch week, I am running a release book special right now. And that is that this book is on sale for 40% off to the first 50 people that buy it as soon as I release this video. So it will be a limited time special, but I love running specials on my books to make everything so much easier and more affordable. And quite honestly, it's not even priced that high at the original price, but I do still love running sales just to make it that much easier for you guys but I think I can even do a little bit better. I am in a particularly happy mood right now because I literally just got off the phone with my brother Justin in Edmonton, Alberta, and his first baby was just born, my niece, Melina. So welcome to the world, baby girl. And we are all on a baby hive right now. So <laughs> it's just really exciting and yeah, I'm just, over the moon. So with that being said, I'm gonna take that energy and share it with you guys as well. And because all of us love free, right now, the first 10 people to jump down into my description box and click the link that will take you to the book, you are going to get a copy of this book for free. So you can consider that a gift for my new niece, Melina. So good luck to the next 10 people that get a copy of that book for free. And if you don't make it to the top 10, don't worry. Like I said, the book is still on sale to the next 50 people at 40% off. So again, the link can be found in the description box below. Good luck to all of you. Anyways, with all that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, so the first hack I wanna get into is part of my food prep that I do every single week, and that is prepping my beans. Now, I specifically wanted to touch on this one, especially, you know, just going hand in hand with the release of my brand new book. So for all of you shake lovers, you know, that are doing the shakes with me, then this one is particularly for you. Also for anyone else, if you wanna know how I personally prep my beans and why. So this is a really important detail and one that I follow every week. I even have my mom kind of jumping on board with it. And I've had other people reach out to me even recently in the comments, I can't remember your name, to say that you also jumped on board 
with this method of cooking the beans and how it's working wonders for you. So before I used to always use canned beans and now that is a really great option. Obviously that is the more convenient option of doing things. But once I got myself an Instant Pot, I swear life changed for me in terms of cooking food. Well, at least specifically with the beans. So put it this way, I used to always buy canned beans, but the moment I tried them in the Instant Pot, I just couldn't go back to canned beans ever again. I just feel like they are just soft as butter, you know, when they're made in the Instant Pot versus the cans. So I just feel like they're a little bit on the hard side for me now um, in the cans. But that's not to say that I would never use canned beans or anything like that, but it's just so easy for me to just throw them in the Instant Pot anyways. It doesn't really feel like any extra work. And because I always have these shakes, I always have beans on the go and then I just freeze them afterwards. So there's constantly a rotation of beans going on in this house. So with that being said, the way that I like to personally prepare these beans is to let them soak overnight. So I throw them in some water, soak them, and in the morning I just rinse them off, throw them in the Instant Pot. I usually cook them on high for about 28, 29 minutes, and they turn out perfect for me every single time. Now, the secret to how I make them is that I add nothing. That's right. So a lot of people find that a little bit weird because oftentimes when we think of beans, we think of adding all the wonderful spices and herbs and stuff and really jazzing them up in some delicious way. But I actually do the opposite. I do nothing. I don't even add salt to them. I literally just cook them in water. And now here's the reason for that. It's because then they become extremely versatile for any meal that you want to use them for. So when you add, you know, spices, let's say like um, if you were going to be making Mexican food or something, tacos and burritos or chili or any of that stuff, those are all very strong flavors. And then you have to use those beans specifically for that meal. Whereas when you make them, you know, just cooked in water, then they can be thrown in any dish. So the way that I mostly consume my beans is through my fiber protein shakes. And that is one of the things I do talk about in that other video is that beans are something that you want to try to get in your diet as often as you can. They are considered a blue zones food. Google it if you don't know what that is, but one of the healthiest foods on the planet and just contain a lot of good stuff in them that promotes longevity and health. And so it is something that all of us should be trying to get a lot more in our diet. Now, for me personally, I used to struggle to get the beans in because I don't always feel like having chili or soup or Mexican food. Um, you know, sometimes you just don't have a taste for those things. And so by having the fiber protein shakes, I don't even taste the beans at all. At all, at all, I promise you, like not even 10%. Like I don't taste the beans at all. And so me and my kids have these shakes all the time. And it's just a great way to know that I got my beans in for that day. They really help in terms of my weight loss journey because they tend to keep me really full. So that's one of the main reasons why I prep them the way that I do. So after about three or four days in the refrigerator, then I transfer them over into one of my reusable freezer bags or a container or even a Ziploc bag sometimes. And then they stay in the freezer and then I take them out and I use them however I wanna use them. Again, mostly for the fiber protein shakes. However, you know, I sometimes throw the beans in a soup or in a salad, only if they're fresh, I don't use the frozen ones. But preparing the beans, just plain old Jane, then you can literally use them however you want. So I've been using that cooking hack for a long time and I honestly don't know if I'll ever prepare my beans any other way. They turn out so soft, so delicious, and they're just so versatile when you prepare them by doing nothing. <laughs> okay, so the next cooking hack that I've been doing, and I've been recently trying to get my mom on board with this too, trying to help her kind of get into her, you know, rhythm of cooking and stuff. She's someone who doesn't particularly like cooking. So I find that this hack is perfect if you're someone who doesn't like to be in the kitchen. And that is to intentionally make larger meals when you do cook. So this is something I've gotten really, really, really good with because it really cuts down on your cooking time. And again, so if you're someone who doesn't like cooking, you don't want to be in the kitchen, this is perfect. So instead of just making, you know, a standard size meal, you can double up that meal intentionally. And so now you'll have something in the fridge that you can have over the next couple of days, you know, and then leading into my next cooking hack would be that you can freeze that meal. So once again, this is something that's kind of even new for me that I've just been starting to do over the last couple of months. I have recently bought myself a deep freezer specifically to be able to prep my food in this way. So basically these two points go hand in hand. Intentionally make extra when you are preparing your meals. And then secondly, get really comfortable and excited about freezing that meal. Now this part is everything and such a game changer. Here's the other trick with that is that you want to be able to freeze these meals in individual serving sizes. This has changed so much for me, making my life so much easier. 
Here's the thing, I actually love cooking. It's my happy place, it's my zen place to be in my kitchen, experimenting, making healthy meals for myself and my family. So I actually have no problem in that department. I love cooking. However, there are some days that get away on me. There are some days that I'm feeling tired or I'm too consumed with other things that are going on that I just don't have the time. So by having meals that are already made from last week or earlier in the week, and I know that I can just grab it out of my fridge or grab it out of my freezer and I have a complete meal ready to go and I didn't even have to spend several hours standing in the kitchen making it, that is a game changer. So intentionally making larger meals when you do cook to save yourself time down the line and then freeze, freeze, freeze a lot of your foods. And you can seriously thank me later how your life will change when you come home and you're too tired to cook or you know too busy and you have these foods ready to go. And here's the thing when it comes to the weight loss journey too. Oftentimes we find ourselves in these situations that we're so hungry and we you know are just thinking, it would be a lot easier just to order a pizza right now. You know, just something that's unhealthy and going to deter us off of our weight loss goals. So this is a really great way to help yourself stay consistent because if you already know, I have a whole meal all ready to go, I'm just gonna eat that. You know, it's so much easier when you're in a moment of feeling hungry and you're just trying to make a decision about what to eat if you have food prepped and ready to go. So I would say that both of those hacks are super helpful when it comes to saving time as well as staying on track with your weight loss goals. Okay, so the next cooking hack is something that I've also been trying out recently. And again, another one that I was talking to my mom about doing too, is just picking two non-starchy veggies a week, like two or three, but you know, keeping it really minimal. Because one of my things that I was doing all the time was just buying the whole grocery store, you know? Like, I don't know if some of you guys are like that, but I just wanna buy this and that, and I'm gonna make this dish and this salad and this stir fry and just like kind of buying everything all at the same time on the same grocery bill. And as we all know, groceries are just like astronomical now. Well, at least in Canada, they are. And so it's getting kind of tough even financially to keep up with that. But also I get really tired of just seeing food go to waste and not being able to eat it all up in the time frame that I thought I was going to. So I'm really trying to simplify things now. And and instead of buying them all at the same time, just picking two, you know, picking two non-starchy veggies and being like, okay, this is what we're gonna eat this week for dinner, both me and my kids. And then maybe next time on the grocery list, I'm gonna pick two different non-starchy vegetables, or maybe I'll just stick to the same ones. It's honestly, whatever is going to work for you, whatever tastes best, whatever you're craving, you know, whatever it is that you want, that's the food that you're going to be happy with, then that's the food that you should be eating. But I feel like it just kind of takes the decision fatigue out of it too, you know, constantly stressing about what am I gonna eat as, you know, my non-starchy vegetable. So this way I already know for the week exactly what I'm going to be eating each night and you know I can alternate between the two or the three veggies or you know eat two or three consistently and then switch it up at the end of the week there are no hard rules when it comes to this but I'm just finding overall that by simplifying my cooking system and my strategies it's really making life so much easier for me so I'm hoping that these will help you guys too okay so I want to preface my last cooking hack with the fact that I don't really like meal prep I am more of an ingredient prep girl I think ingredient prep is another amazing strategy to keep yourself on track with things but when it comes to actual meal prep not the biggest fan i don't generally like eating the same food every single day all week long i tried it and it really just wasn't for me however i do believe in having one default meal every single week and what i mean by that is having one meal prepared that I can eat from all week long. So this kind of goes hand in hand with my other hacks about making extra food and freezing it, but a little bit slightly different. So this one I wanna have ready to go at all times in my fridge. So for some people that could look like, you know, a nice pasta dish, that could look like a chili, that could look like a starchy salad. For me, almost nine out of 10 times, it's always going to be a soup. So around this place, I always like to have some type of soup ready to go that we can just eat out of that all week long. But more importantly, I know for sure that if I'm in that moment that I was just talking about earlier in the video and I'm really hungry, like I don't have time to just pull something out of the freezer and wait for it to defrost and you know do all of that because that can sometimes take a few minutes too. But I'm talking about the kind of hungry that you know, you're ready to eat your own arm type of hungry. We've all been there. And when you're there, you definitely don't wanna be caught in a pinch of what do I eat now? I don't have time to cook. I can't wait to cook. You know, so having a default meal always ready to go, you will never fall into that trap. 
And here's the thing, I don't always feel to eat soup. So it's not like that's my go-to meal because I just love soup, like it's going out of style and I wanna eat it every single day. No, but I know that even if I just have to have, you know, a small bowl of soup, well, at the same time, it enables me to prepare the food that I'm actually excited to eat. And, you know, it's kind of a win-win situation. Sometimes it's not that serious. We really just need a little something to help take that edge off when we're feeling hangry and, you know, just we want to eat everything in sight. We sometimes just need a little something to help take that edge off and we are golden. So there it is. My fifth cooking hack is to just figure out some type of default meal that you can have week to week to help keep yourself out of a situation that, you know, you're going to be tempted to eat something that you really don't want to be eating. All right, everyone, so I'm gonna leave the video here. I hope that you found these cooking hacks to be helpful. I certainly find them super helpful. So if you're new here, that's what my channel is all about, you know, sharing all of my tips and tricks that I have used to help get 57 pounds off. I know that losing weight can be a struggle for some of us. It certainly was for me. A lot of you have been following me. You know that I didn't just, you know, gain some fast weight from like a pregnancy or something like that and then lose it and then come on here and just tell you guys, oh my gosh, it's so easy. It just fell off of me. You're not going to hear that on my channel because I am someone who struggled my whole life to lose weight. And now I finally lost 57 pounds. I'm still going. I still have about 20 pounds to lose. So I love being able to share everything that's been working for me. Although I will say health and weight loss is not a one size fits all. I will never ever try to convince you otherwise. Um, I think that's really irresponsible of people to promote that this way is the only way. And I don't know, I just can never get next to that. So for me, I'm always going to stress, we have to figure out what works best for us. So all I can do here is share my personal experience, what is working for me, and hope that it can even help even just a handful of you guys out there as well. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget about that awesome book sale, 40% off to the first 50 people. Again, the link is in the description box below. We will see all of you guys in the next one.